10 cats, super shy guy, it's Louis Spence. Up for a laugh, it's Joe Lyson. And their team captain, John Locke. And facing them tonight, go figure, it's Rachel Riley. OMG, it's DOD, David O'Doherty. And their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 Out of 10 Cats, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 9 out of 10 children visit McDonald's once a month? What's that thing that all the kids get in McDonald's? Oh, yeah, fat. 68% <laughs> of men start conversations with strangers while queuing for the toilet. I wish people would just mind their peas and queue. <laughs> 27% of people keep a weapon by the bed to protect themselves against intruders. I don't have a weapon. Instead, I sleep in stockings and suspenders. <laughs> then if I'm burgled, I just throw back the covers and say, what kept you? <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean's team, what do you think the nation should be talking about over the last week? Hmm. Well, yeah. what do you think? Well, there's that one big story that's been knocking about for a few weeks now. <laughs> I think I might know the one you mean. It's uh, the Jimmy Savile scandal. Oh. Particularly, that, that, that's been a, in front of virtually every newspaper. Do you read the story about these horrendous things he's done? I mean, I mean, you think you go... I mean, the story's now emerging of necrophilia and you think that I remember hearing that story years ago and you're thinking when you're using necrophilia as a smokescreen <laughs> something must be wrong <laughs> how does a hospital who the hell runs a hospital that lets someone yeah let him have a key to the mortuary that's fine <laughs> yeah yeah oh he wants to go in the mortuary yeah no he does a lot of, he does a lot of stuff for us but yeah let him have a key to the mortuary I mean I'm disgusted I've handed back my key <laughs> You know that noise? You can probably do it, John. Can you know that noise that Savile used to make? What was that weird...? I've sort of retired that impression. <laughs> <laughs> John Simpson this week said, it's the biggest scandal at the BBC for 50 years. But yeah, no shit. <laughs> and the hideous thing is the number of people who knew about it and didn't do anything. Mm. Like, usually when something like this happens, people go, oh, well, you seem like such a lovely bloke. But when this happened, everyone went, oh, yeah, he's a sex-offending necromancer. I thought... <laughs> I thought that went without saying. And now he's dead. He's never going to... People just aren't... In this world, you live in the world of Miss Marple and Midsummer Murders, where a bad thing happens and then a bungling old biddy sorts it out at the end. <laughs> People's brains just... I cannot cope with living in a world where people just go, oh, yeah, I did it for years, and now he's dead, so he got away with it. <laughs> well, it's grim, so let's not dwell on it, but let's see if it's one of the most talked about things over the last week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the Jimmy Savile paedophile scandal continues. Jimmy Savile was still working into his 80s. People used to call him a coffin dodger. Little did they know. <laughs> OK, what else? There must be something more upbeat we could talk about. Uh, what else have uh, people been talking about? Another Bond movie? Yeah! Another one. Bound you don't sound excited. Well, we've got Homeland now. We don't need Bond anymore. You've got Homeland? Yeah. We don't need Bond? Yeah. Homeland's way better than the Bond what? movies. <laughs> what are you saying? I don't know. I went to see one. I went to see Casino Royale, cos they build it as it's nothing like a Bond film. It's totally different. And it was just another Bond film. Oh, it's a Bond film? Yeah, I know. <laughs> if you're issue with a Bond film, it's just a Bond I film. Know. These ones, they go, it's darker and grittier. Yeah, oh. it'd, be, it'd be darker if he had to get Ryanair flights everywhere. Beside <laughs> 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 Bond, kneeling beside the check-in desk, stuffing underwear in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Dench for the premiere had 007 in Diamantes on her neck. And not a lot of people know, you actually, she had a vajazzle. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you could hear her coming. She was sort of crunching down the road. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for putting that image in my head. <laughs> my tip for a film. If you're making a film and you get a theme tune, get someone to sing the theme tune who can pronounce some of the words that are in the theme tune. 
What's, she, what's your issue with the theme tune? She cannot speak. <laughs> Is this Adele? <laughs> Lovely Adele. I won't Lovely have a word said against her. Adele, or as I'm sure she says it, Adele. <laughs> <laughs> Three times I heard it, I thought it was a song about scaffold. Scaffold. <laughs> 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 I like the fact that the fact that Adele sung the theme tune. I like it. You know, the opening title was a Bond. You always see through the barrel of a gun. I now imagine it's a tube of Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Adele, if you're watching, put those down. Making such an effort to seem really working class, isn't she? Like, oh, I'm like really down to. I work. don't think she's making an effort. I think that <laughs> no. comes naturally. But go on. <laughs> hey, I want to see her really making it. Like, I want to see her push the pram down the red carpet, like with a cigarette. Shut up, Sharon. Like that. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I put forward a Bond theme, and they didn't go for it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a shame. What was what was yours? Bond on a bike. Bond on a boat. <laughs> Bond with his hands around a middle and throat. Skyfall. Skyfall. <laughs> Oh, Skyfall! Da 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 da! Hey! <laughs> 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 Is that not a stance thing, do you think, Louis? Well, that's plenty. Like, I quite like that, and I would have put a head roll at the end. <laughs> 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 Let's try again. Bond on the back, bond on the back, oh, bond on yeah. the back, and round it, right then. So let's have a look and see if Bond is up there. Yes, the new James Bond film, Skyfall, was released last Friday. In the next Bond film, Daniel Craig will face his ultimate nemesis, a younger, cheaper actor. <laughs> Sean Steen, what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? Is it Strictly Come Dancing is back on our screens and lighting up Saturday night? <laughs> a whole nation of people. I like Strictly, it's fine, but can we just get Brucey off it now? before something horrendous happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting any better, is it? We all... I don't want to see him go in the middle of a live show. <laughs> exactly. Let's put him in a home somewhere. <laughs> He's going to do the Children in Need special, that's fine. He'll come back for that. And now we finally know why Pudsey wears an eye patch, so he can't see half of what goes on at the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I should do it. I should host it. What's Strictly Come Dancing? I can't say it, but I can host it. <laughs> <laughs> How come you're not one of the judges? You'd make an excellent judge on that. Um, because they've already got their judge. I would be an excellent judge, yeah, you're right. I would. I'd be fucking great. I'm on the ice, you know. You're on the ice? I do the ice. You can't judge ice and the dancing, well, I you? Well, I could... How about how it exhaust a man? I could do that. You couldn't judge I the dancing do... and the icing. No, it would yes, just I be can. empty. You'd have nothing left to give, yes, Louis. Yes, I would. I've always got something to give. You couldn't judge all the, all the... What it takes from you to judge the people on the ice, how it sucks from your very marrow, and then to ask you to judge the dancing too, it's too much to ask of one man. I could do it. Right. No, no, you No, I could, and I could it's do Brian's Got Talent, to and I could do whatever you want. Push you to those limits. You can push me where you want. <laughs> Strictly, isn't it just for, like, old people to remember what they did on a Saturday night? Like, oh, we used to go dancing, isn't it? Like, when I'm old, it'd be Strictly come fighting outside the kebab shop. Right? <laughs> Would you ever consider going on it, Rachel? Would you? I, I imagine would they suck. Are, I had, um... My would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll probably get through. <laughs> I did do one hour with a Strictly Come Dancing ex-pro before our wedding. Did you? What, you thought I'd treat myself before I met No, this my husband made me. <laughs> it wasn't anything to do with oh, me. Oh, to learn to dance, I'm sorry. I misunderstood, <laughs> <laughs> I misunderstood that. David, do you watch Strictly Come Dancing? I am just missing the part of the brain that cares. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Strictly's up there. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Strictly Come Dancing is heating up. Lisa Riley blew everyone away last week. Well, she shouldn't have had that three bean casserole for lunch. <laughs> uh, John, David, Rachel, uh, what else have the nation been talking about over the last week? We're getting a new labelling system for food. It's basically saying, oh, poor people are stupid. They go into a supermarket and they pick up Haribo Tang Fastics and they think it's fruit. <laughs> <laughs> people know 
know what shit food is. The reason I eat shit food is because they work all day in an office with people they hate. <laughs> <laughs> they're working in a job that they're told every day they're going to lose, and then they go back to a shitty flat that they can't afford to buy. <laughs> and do you know what they think? I don't fancy cost cost for tea. <laughs> do you know what I fancy? A mixing bowl <laughs> full of Viennetta and chips that I eat with my fist. <laughs> John. What happened there? It was quite a depressing thought, and then at the end, you pulled it back with Viennetta and chips, and everyone went, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit food is the only joy some people get. And it's cheap as well. People don't shop. They don't buy bad food. They buy bad food because it's cheaper. They just go, oh, shitty pie, one pound. Lovely. <laughs> that make me feel temporarily less alone. And it doesn't make any... <laughs> The reason they call it a traffic light system is because it's the same as traffic lights on the roads. If it's amber or red, you just do it faster and hope no one sees you. <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing because the traffic light thing for me, I only think of them as like, you know, the traffic light parties where green means you're up for it. And I, <laughs> I accidentally fucked a chicken wrap. <laughs> familiar with the traffic light party. And what happens? You wear a green shirt if you're up for it, amber if you're not sure, and red if you're definitely out. I've always been an amber gambler. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so do, you, do you watch the calories? Do you watch what you eat? Uh, no, no, I just exercise so I don't get fat. But the thing is, is now when people go shopping, innit, you're going to be looking in their basket, and if they're full of red and they're fat, you are going to think you're greedy fat fuck up. <laughs> If they're, you know, if they're sort of going in between, they've got a bit of amber and a bit of green, you're like, mm, well, give them a go, do you know what I mean? If they're all green, then you know they're gay or in PR. Hmm? You cannot imply that only gay people eat vegetables. <laughs> no, but we'd have a lot of green. Have you seen that programme on Channel 4, The Food Hospital? The Food Hospital? People that are sick go there and they get cures with different diets and stuff, but it's really good for making you eat healthily or just not eat. Because it's on at like eight o'clock. So the last couple of times we've been eating and it's on, and they're doing this fibre challenge, and they keep showing you different pictures of poo, like while you're trying to eat. So you're saying your dieting tip is it, look at pictures of poo well, while you're eating. It puts you off your food. I think you want to go with a guy who's got more than one channel on his tip. <laughs> <laughs> you come out of my house, we'll watch the football. We'll stick the Simpsons on. I got DVDs. <laughs> I think the whole works. If you don't like watching shit while you eat, well. <laughs> <laughs> and, that is, and that is the worst proposition that's ever been made. <laughs> that's not one of the most talked about things over the last week. But the government have announced a new food labelling system to promote healthy eating. Supermarket food is already labelled when it's high in fat, full of salt and has poor nutritional value. And those labels say Iceland. <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, two more things still to get. What do you think, Sean? Britain is finally out of double-dip recession. <laughs> the recession is over! <laughs> it's out of recession. And, boy, does that make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those bits of news, you know those bits of information you get, and you really think this doesn't really make any difference to people's everyday lives. It makes no difference. It's something that the press and the government are obsessed with. It really, doesn't it? It's a bit like the pollen count. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the pollen count, you're thinking, why? Nobody makes a decision based on the pollen count. <laughs> Nobody's ever gone, oh, we've cancelled the wedding. <laughs> well, it's going to be very high pollen count on that day. <laughs> and uh, we just can't, we can't face it. We just can't do it. <laughs> it's one of those pieces of information, you know, you go... Ooh, you know. Yeah, the, so, well, uh, GDP has grown by 1% in the third quarter of this year. Most so... people don't even know what GDP is. What? Do you know what GDP is? Oh, sure. What is it? Well, gross domestic product. Yeah, but, but what is that? What is... Well, the gross domestic product. Yeah, what is it's like the things that we make in houses that are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it is a coincidence, isn't it, that someone started paying tax again and the country's out of recession. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the worst thing about the recession is I read this week Argos is closing stores and they're no. going digital. No more Argos catalogues. What am I supposed to do in the toilet? <laughs> there's no Argos catalogue to play the Argos game where you flick through and you go, yeah. ah, 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 treadmill. <laughs> the joy for me with the Argos was that it's, it was, it's like a shop, but much more like a bookies 
in that you study the form <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to take a punt on that. <laughs> you turn on that go over to the big screen. You're like, come on, 167. <laughs> Joe, you please run over session? Yeah. The thing is, is that um, they said that the Olympics, because it's a bit obviously to do with the Olympics, but the Olympics was about £300 million under budget. I've worked out that that is roughly a fiver for everybody. So if they gave us all a fiver, that's a Boots meal deal, isn't it? So, <laughs> I love a Boots meal deal. If you're going to get yourself a meal deal, for heaven's sake, get an innocent smoothie. Because, I mean, that's the price of the meal deal alone. So, exactly. <laughs> your sandwich and your crisps are free. <laughs> hey, innocent. I hate their ads. I hate when you read the side of the innocent smoothie. They're a majority owned by Coca-Cola, and you read the side of it, and it's like, we found a bucket of fruit on our farm, and a cow said it was yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Water is probably like smokestacks in a forest with men with top hats pointing at pictures of third world countries. <laughs> <laughs> it's called innocent smoothie. No, oh, you've fallen for the oldest trick in the book. Give it a nice. <laughs> it's probably like people making those smoothies are being lashed, going <laughs> squash more fruit. <laughs> okay, let's see if Britain coming out of recession is one of the top five talking points. <laughs> Yes, it's been revealed Britain's finally come out of the double-dip recession. To put this news into perspective, if the economy was your granddad, he's come out of his coma, but I wouldn't buy him a Christmas present just yet. <laughs> <laughs> OK, figures are buzzers. One more thing to get. What do you think, Sean? Is it the new iPad Mini? No. They've released a new iPad uh, that's not an iPhone, it's not an iPad, somewhere in between. An iPad Mini, little iPad. It's like only seven inches. Or something like that. What's the point? What do you mean, only seven inches? <laughs> you know, I mean, they've got, you've got your phone and you've got your pad. Why do you want something just in between? Well, it's like brunch, isn't it? <laughs> I really want one. They could release anything and I, like, I really want to buy it. They could, like, release, like, I don't know, like, the eye infection and I just, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> so, David, are you going to get one? Uh, I got an iPad and... The slogan should be, like, a shit computer. <laughs> it, my computer does everything better than it. So the only possible use for an iPad, then, would be as a very luxurious chopping board. <laughs> and then maybe you could have a comedy playing to counteract the onion <laughs> crying. <laughs> and then said, either that, or maybe I'll get six of them and tile my hole with them. And then when I go to answer the front door, it'd be like Michael Jackson and Billie Jean. <laughs> Rachel, are you going to get one of these? Uh, well, I had this debate with my husband a little while ago, but I still don't see the point of that, because once you've got one, one size and the other size, then it doesn't do anything extra, does it? But I get his cast off, so whenever he buys the new one, I get the old one, so I might encourage him to get one. You get the old one once he's finished with it? Yeah. I'm, I'm quite You're earning, that. aren't you? You've got... You can... <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I need another one of a different size, or do I want to buy a pair of shoes? It's an, a bit of a no-brainer. We're still talking about the iPod or your husband. <laughs> <laughs> still if you need a smaller one, I'm willing to step in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the iPad Mini is one of the most talked-about things this week. Yes, indeed. Apple have announced the release of the new iPad Mini. Experts think the iPad Mini will be the most popular gift this Christmas, so if you work in a Chinese sweatshop, that tea break might just have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, Conservative Chief Whip Andrew Mitchell has resigned after being accused of calling police officers plebs. People say pleb is the worst thing he could have called a policeman. Of course, they've forgotten about scum, peeler, plod, pig, bacon, rosa, fivo. <laughs> Filth, dibble, busy, fuzz, tithead and <laughs> And a Brazilian student has sold her virginity this week for half a million pounds. I'm not a prostitute, said the 20-year-old Brazilian prostitute. <laughs> At the end of that round, Sean, Joe and Louis have four points. John, oh, Rachel right. and David have one point. One point. <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. Welcome back to 
you out of the ten cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. John, Rachel, David, your turn first. What do you like the look of? Can we go for the pumpkin one? Pumpkin. Okay, well, it's Halloween on Wednesday, so we asked our studio audience, are you looking forward to Halloween, yes or no? What do you think? Well, it's a Wednesday this year as well, so you can't even have a party, really. How, why can't you have a party on well, a Wednesday? you yeah. could, but it wouldn't be a very good one. You ain't never been you to one to... of my Wednesday parties. <laughs> <laughs> you stay in and watch Crime Watch. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> Thurman, the Kill Bill outfit one year, but it was just a plastic jumpsuit and it's the hottest thing. It was horrible. That is the hottest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Good, do, you, do you ever dress up? Yeah. <laughs> so, how do you, what, what's your... Name one of your costumes. Oh, well, not for Halloween. Oh. <laughs> That's my Tuesday parties. <laughs> I dress up like a chef sometimes when I'm cooking tea. I've got my old chef's outfits. John's confusing sitting at home on his own with a dinner, <laughs> with a party. <laughs> That's what John thinks a party is. Having some food and a drink. I'm interested in this when you dress up as a chef. Yeah. I mean, is that just to cook your tea? Yeah. <laughs> just dressing up like What do you put on the full? I've got the check pants Ooh. and the white thing and the apron and a little hat. And sometimes I think, do you know what? I'm going to be in here all day. Just get a bottle of wine out. All day doing the Finder's crispy pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> it takes half an hour. My only fear is dying in the middle of it and getting found. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously that would look ridiculous. <laughs> if someone came to the door. Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, do you, do you get dressed up on Halloween? I have. What, what, was, your, what was your finest hour? I, I think my pussy. <laughs> I can't cost well, because of course you no, were in... I was in cat, so I have the original magical Mr. Mistopheles, so I slip him on and he's You didn't go dress as a pussy because that's terrifying to you. I was I mean I was I was very surprised by it. It sort of seemed to appear suddenly about ten years ago, this um, excitement about Halloween. Mm. I grew up, there was no even mention of it. You know, it was just Basically regular... Satanic, there were satanic rituals <laughs> <laughs> that we go to, and... Um, well, satanic rituals and then... ...animals and the youngest boy child of the village. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't call it Halloween in those days. It was very much about our Lord Satan and thanking him for a year of evil. <laughs> <laughs> but suddenly... Somebody... <laughs> Thank you, brethren. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you at the next lodge meeting. <laughs> I'll be wearing the golden hooves. Um... So how do you deal with trick-or-treaters, then? Do people come to your... Do they not come and knock on the door? They do get a cheery, lovely door. face? Yeah, give them sweets, yeah. Give them sweets. What? The weird thing is, you have a bowl of sweets and some kids just go... Nah, nah. <laughs> that's, when, that's when you have to show them bad, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I like it now that... Because you get cream eggs and then they start calling them scream eggs. That means it's time for Halloween. <laughs> but there's no other ones you can do. I've thought, I've written to all the chocolate companies. <laughs> oh, the only one I've come up with is Boost. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's get some answers. Uh, what, what do you think? Do, uh, do you think this audience are looking forward to Halloween? I don't think people give a rat's ass, Jimmy. No. <laughs> OK. What, what do you think? Do you think people are looking forward to our audience? Yes. Yes, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you the answer is yes. 63% of our audience are looking forward to Halloween. <laughs> David Beckham's going to get a huge shock this Halloween. He's going to wake up next to a skeleton. Sean, Joe, Louis, what would you like to look of? The woman. OK, so here's your related question. Most people love being the centre of attention, true or false? False. Who would want to be centre of attention? <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, of all the people you know, Sean, mm. who would want to be centre of attention <laughs> Are you <laughs> Sit still, Louis. I, I'm, I don't mean to draw attention to myself or anything. I mean, really. I, I love this. Thing. Okay. I don't think he can get up now. Jesus. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Luckily, I've got early onset Alzheimer's. <laughs> Question, Jimmy. Uh, most people love being the centre of attention, true or false? Most, I think most people don't like it, do they? Most people don't like it. That's why they've got pricks like us to take that space. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like well, we obviously like to be the centre of attention. Sure. That's why we're sitting here with the lights on us, we're mic'd up. I've got my special shirt on. Jimmy's lost all that fat round his throat. <laughs> You, Joe, do you enjoy the limelight? Y yes and no, because there's good attention and bad attention, isn't there? But I was going into um, Little, I love Little, and this old lady <laughs> came out with her husband, and she looked at me for like about 10 seconds, which was a bit too long. And then so I was like, oh, I'm being recognised. And then after 10 seconds, she turned to her husband and went, We forgot to buy faggots. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I got packed was in Little. Really? Yeah. You got papped in Lidl? Yep. Just been to the gym and I was in gym stuff and they followed us to the gym and then we just went to Lidl, bought some ham and smoked salmon and then went home. Bye, you have the time, don't you know you're married? <laughs> Should we go to the gym and then get some ham? Yeah. I can't keep a girlfriend. <laughs> I'll take them to the gym but then I just tend to go back. I didn't know about the ham move. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. Uh, last week in Brighton, a uh, per per person with camera taking photographs, sitting outside a pub for ages, took loads and loads of photographs. And then I went over and said, here, I'm trying to have a drink with my friends. And the guy went, well, it's just that um, I love you in the IT crowd and my wife loves you in Bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> she is a completely different Irish person called Chris O'Dowd. So... How many of you are there? <laughs> just the two. And we come over here. One has to look after Ireland and then the other... <laughs> oh! Pump Kinder Surprise. <laughs> Boom! Oh! Oh, what do you think, John? Do you like being the centre of attention? I like to be the centre of attention. <laughs> that is different. Go to people's house parties and just spread shit. <laughs> Get the woman on her own in the kitchen and she goes, I've been talking to Mark, he says it's not going very well. <laughs> Think she should go and have a word with him about it in front of everyone. Down the wine first, finish your wine, love. Then get in there and have it out. <laughs> that sort of thing I like, just standing back going... <laughs> 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 I did this, all this. <laughs> we'll get some answers on this. Most people love being the centre of attention, true or false? What are you going to go for? I'd say no, false. You say false, what, what are you guys going to go with? False. false. You're going false? Well, I can tell you the answer is false. Only 26% of people love being the centre of attention. But you're right. <laughs> Personally, I find it annoying when people always want to be the centre of attention. Oh, look at me. Oh, I'm bleeding. Oh, call an ambulance. <laughs> can we not just talk about me for a bit? <laughs> if you really do crave being the centre of attention, I can recommend a very good accountant. <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's six points for Sean's team and two points for John's team. That's it for part two. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to A Out 10 Counts. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Best way to start a conversation in a bar. Is that a gun in your pocket, or is your penis shaped like a gun? <laughs> <laughs> we go to the same bar. <laughs> <laughs> but I, if I wanted to chat in a bar, I would take a friend whose take opinions I respected. I wouldn't sidle uh, up to an I see the floor in that plan. <laughs> <laughs> John, imagine you were in a bar with Rachel. How would you start a conversation? Where'd you get all those bags of ham? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe we're finally talking. I've been following you for fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there, out of interest? <laughs> Just drawing an old fashioned tram. <laughs> <laughs> Jones in a forklift. <laughs> She's in Lidl. He's, he's back in the shelves in Lidl. <laughs> so, Rachel, presumably before you got married, you were in bars picking up yeah. dudes. How would you... <laughs> I always talk to people with dogs. 
Because you, if you want to cuddle the dog, you generally have to ask, don't you? It's oh. amazing how much people will talk to you if you throw beer in a dog's face. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk to one of the If you just throw a pint of beer in a dog's face, <laughs> they'll start talking to you. <laughs> First they say, what's it doing, it's doing? And then you say, conversation star. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the chat. And they say... <laughs> Back to the chat. And I think there's something wrong with the taps in here. Barman, you need to change the barrel. And then you're off, everybody's chatting. <laughs> Shall we call the police? <laughs> Shall we get help? Usually, yeah. the, usually the conversation is, I'm blind and now my dog is drunk. Brilliant. <laughs> If you're talking about something and you say, you, you mention like their mother and they go, my mother's dead, you go, oh, just... <laughs> 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 yeah, the dog's face. And then that's for gone. Then, that's the for awkwardness gone. over the mother, that's for gone. Why well, did you, you put you know, the you beer in the dog's face? Yeah, you talk about something really awkward, <laughs> just go... <laughs> <laughs> or you just, I just, I lie, I tell lies. I go to someone and go, I wrote the Birdie song. <laughs> not, not all of it, I didn't write all of it. I got stuck on did a little... little. <laughs> This guy in this top songwriter in uh, used to work, used to work with all the greats, and he came up with a do 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 bit. <laughs> so I, I gave him forty percent. <laughs> within a minute, everyone's chatting, and you get bored, and you throw a beer in a dog's face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, best way to start a conversation in a bar. You buy them a drink. Well, uh, offer to buy a drink is number two. What, what are the other what are the other things are people you say? What's number five? Okay, so tell it's... me number five, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Ask to borrow a lighter. Good, to start a conversation. Can I borrow your lighter? <laughs> yeah, not like that, Sean. <laughs> There's loud music playing in the pub. I have to shout. Bloody loud music in here. Can I borrow your lighter? <laughs> I said lighter, you stupid prick. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It, it would make them feel good. You look lovely. That oh. is the right answer. Oh. Well, yes, the best way to start a conversation in a bar is to pay someone a compliment. Also on the list is buy a bottle of champagne, which for viewers in Scotland is a kind of sparkling wine made from grapes. <laughs> They're a type of fruit. <laughs> it's a type of food. <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Rachel and David have two points, Sean, Joe and Louis have seven points. They're tonight's winners. <laughs> Wait, I've got another one. David Adocherty, ladies and gentlemen. Scarrow. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>